And welcome back. I'm Mabel John. You're watching continuing coverage of the World Health Care Congress here in Washington, D.C. And we're going to talk about health care investing um, through the eyes of a venture capitalist. And we're going to have uh, this discussion with Alice, Alyssa Jaffe of the Pritzker Group Venture Capital. Hi there, Alyssa. How are you Hi, today? Hi, I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Well, there are so many growth opportunities in healthcare now, mm. and good ones are hard to come by, though. So you have to do a lot of research on where to spend valuable dollars. Yes. In healthcare, what are some of the interesting growth opportunities? Yeah, so I'll actually take a step back before I go through sort of our thematic areas. We're, we're pretty thesis driven in the way we invest. We look at the market, we survey where there's opportunities, we spend a lot of time with provi providers, with payers, with pharma execs to really understand what their challenges are. And so for me, number one is, are you actually solving a problem? Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of smart people who come to healthcare and they came from tech and they say, oh, there's so much opportunity here. And they come in and they want to enter a solution that ultimately isn't solving the right kind of problem or they don't understand how the regulatory environment works, how the control works in healthcare, or even how from just a workflow perspective. And so for us, we really want to get, does this person understand? Do they know? Is there sometimes what we call founder market fit? Right. Does this founder understand how to solve the problem of the healthcare market better than anybody else? Mm -hmm. So thematically right now, we sort of focus on three main areas. Um, first and foremost, what we call kind of the digital patient experience, right? As we move towards personalized health, as we move towards empowering consumers, is there a way that we can do that while still connecting into the enterprise and not losing what we've built as the infrastructure? Mm -hmm. um, second is workflow automation, right? It is no small feat to understand how to integrate into a health system, into a network, and then deliver an efficient solution. And so we look for a lot of solutions that can provide that type of kind of granular, um, tactical way that some of these enterprises can work. Um, and then start to think about outside of the four walls of a hospital, right? Um, in the post-acute care setting, what are other things that can happen in healthcare? How can we be delivering care? or maybe triaging care so that we can reduce the cost burden on the system. Mm -hmm. So when you're looking at these um, different areas and mm -hmm. speaking to different people, mm -hmm. where are the greatest needs? Yeah, so I think when we, when we speak to folks, it's really about, again, are they solving a, pr a problem that one of these entities oh. is, is looking to solve, yes. right? Um, so from a need base, you know, our panel today is on artificial intelligence mm -hmm. in healthcare. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of use cases and applications in AI that potentially could be interesting, but just adding technology onto some type of you know, mm -hmm. existing process doesn't mean it's going to get better. Mm -hmm. I like to joke in healthcare and say, if you build it, they won't come. <laughs> right. You have to have some, exactly. it goes beyond the gee whiz factor, exactly. right? Exactly. So in terms of AI, are you finding that hospitals are focused on a certain area when they're using artificial intelligence? Radiology, for instance, yep. is a huge Imaging has sector. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Imaging has probably taken off is sort of the keynote in terms of, hey, this is how it can work, um, because it's a great way to supplement some of the kind of human intervention that needs to happen and add a lot of value very quickly in a confined process that already exists. Um, as you think sort of long term, you know, one of the most exciting is precision medicine and personalized health, right? How are you using this for either diagnoses, um, prediction, prevention? There's a lot going on in oncology, um, you know, a company in our backyard in, in healthcare uh, in Chicago is Tempest, right, who's sort of well known for doing that on the Bay, you have Grail, so you have a lot of these big bohemists who are focused on, on building. Um, but then there's, again, that, that middle area where there's a lot of new opportunity, and I talk about workflow automation. You know, we invested in a company called Apervita that's helping to distribute and collect analytics and has built an AI platform in which to do so. So a process that used to take, you know, providers six to 12 months now takes them days, mm -hmm. right? That's real. That's real time savings and something that can be integrated. Mm -hmm. You also see it on the pharma side. Uh, we invested in a company called AI Cure. This is facial recognition technology for medication adherence. So you take the, an iPhone, right? A basic tool that everybody has. You know, in clinical trials, you want to know did that patient take the pill? 
Well, you can see the pill, you can see the patient's face, but what else are you collecting? You're mm. actually seeing what their pulse is, what their blood pressure is based on how light reflects off their face. There's a number of different sort of biometric features that you're gathering from that data that you can imagine the use cases moving forward. Are you finding that hospital systems are very careful in their research before they start going down the road towards a specific innovation? I mean, how, how thorough is their due diligence when they're looking at what to invest in? Yeah, so um, I, I won't speak as much to what they invest in, I guess, invest in, in two ways, right? They can invest from as a customer or invest as many health systems now actually have venture arms. I'll speak more to the former. Yes. Um, but it's really hard, right? It's hard to adapt, I think, in any industry with any enterprise to new technology. You know, when IBM says, oh, we have Watson, you know, they maybe have a little more comfort than in our world, we have new, new entrants, right? Yes. These startups who are coming in against the incumbents and saying, this technology is better, how do we get someone like a giant health system to listen to us to really understand that? So they are doing a lot of diligence and often we play the role of liaison to connect those two and say, you know, we vet thousands of companies. And so if we've leaned in and said, we're gonna make a bet on these companies based on our relationships with a lot of the providers, mm -hmm. you know, that's when they're willing to say, okay, you know, maybe we will put a little bit more weight on this, we'll take that meeting because it sounds like you've done some of that pre-vetting to, to separate the wheat from the chaff for mm -hmm. us to understand what's gonna really solve our problems. And that comes from, you know, we've been investing for over 22 years um, out of the Pritzker Venture arm. Yes. And that comes from, you know, decades of, of proving that the companies that we invest in drive value for some of those customers and businesses that we're working with. Right, I mean, Pritzker is associated with some of the biggest names mm -hmm. in corporate America today. Yeah, right? absolutely. Uh, and what are some of the answers you're hoping to get by participating in the panel? Yeah, I think for me, it's always fascinating to hear different perspectives. You know, my job is so interesting because I get to see the future every day. Right now, do I want to bet on that future is a different story, but I now get to sit on a panel with three other people who all have a different perspective on what that future should look like. And that helps to inform me to say, huh, was my previous thinking one that I want to hold true on? You know, even thematically, some of the issues that I mentioned at the start of this conversation, mm -hmm. you know, is that going to sustain maybe in 2018, but maybe not in 2019, right? Mm -hmm. So you constantly have to be iterating, thinking, and changing. The only way to do that is to surround myself with people that are smarter than me. All right, Alyssa Jaffe, on that note, thank you so much. Thank you, I appreciate the time. And I'm Mabel Zhang. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned to our coming content.